Experiment 3. Volumetric Analysis In this experiment, you will be performing one of the fundamental experimental procedures in chemistry, volumetric analysis, or titrations. Titrations involve using a solution of a known concentration combined with an indicator in order to find the concentration of an unknown solution. The goal during titrations is to produce precise, accurate data and results. The definitions of precision and accuracy are as follows. Precision is the reproducibility of a measurement, also known as the average deviation of a set of measurements. Accuracy is how close the measurement is to the true value. If we think of precision and accuracy in terms of throwing darts, it becomes very clear what the difference is. If this were a set of throws, for example, it would have low precision and low accuracy, as the throws are all over the place, and their average is nowhere near the bullseye. In terms of titrations, this trial would show low precision and low accuracy, as the titers are all over the place, or there is a large deviation, and their average is nowhere near the true value. This set of throws, though they may be all over the place or show low precision, have a high accuracy because they all average out to the bullseye. In terms of titrations, this trial would show low precision as there is a large deviation among the numbers. However, it shows high accuracy as the average is very close to the true value of 7.50 milliliters. This set of throws shows a high precision but a low accuracy as they are all very close to one another but nowhere near the bullseye. Again, in terms of titrations, these titers are very precise or have a high precision as there is very little deviation among them. However, they show low accuracy as their average is nowhere near the true value. In any good game of throwing darts, this is what you strive for. All of your throws very close together and very close to the bullseye. Otherwise, high precision and high accuracy, as you would strive for in titrations. This trial shows high precision and high accuracy, as the titers show very little deviation among them, and their average is very close to the true value. During titrations, you will be using mainly volumetric glassware. In all volumetric glassware measures to four significant figures. Burettes, volumetric pipettes, more pipettes, and volumetric flasks. Here are some definitions in case you are not familiar with titrations. A titration is where an aqueous substance is analyzed by reacting it with a known aqueous substance. So when you analyze one liquid by reacting it with another. A titrant is the substance or the liquid being dispensed from a burette. The equivalence point is when chemically equivalent amounts of reactants are present. And the end point is when the indicator changes color. This is the main thing you will be looking for during a titration. In this experiment, you'll be dealing with primary and secondary standards. A primary standard is a substance available in high purity that can be accurately measured. All of the relevant properties of this prepared solution are known. In this experiment, KHP, or potassium hydrogen phthalate, is the primary standard. A secondary standard is a solution that has been titrated against, or standardized, using the primary standard. So you will be using KHP, the primary standard, to analyze sodium hydroxide, the secondary standard. As you will be preparing your own secondary standards, 500 milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, you must know how much solid sodium hydroxide you must use. 
Using this calculation, you should be able to see how I came to the conclusion that exactly approximately 2 grams of NaOH will be needed. Exactly approximately simply means that you must have 2 grams, but you must know exactly how much you have. Simply use the analytical balance to weigh out around 2 grams of NaOH. You will then use KHP, the primary standard, to calculate the exact concentration of your prepared NaOH solution. KHP and sodium hydroxide have a 1 to 1 molar ratio in this reaction, which will make the calculation simple. Since we know the mass of KHP used, the molar mass of KHP, the volume of sodium hydroxide titrated, and the balance equation, as seen here, we can easily calculate the concentration of sodium hydroxide in our secondary standard. As you can see by the calculation here, you can ultimately end up with the concentration of sodium hydroxide. When doing your calculations, make sure that you include all units so you can see how they cancel out. Please note there is an additional video available should you wish to go over this calculation in detail. Now you're ready to analyze the acidity of the white cranberry cocktail. Why don't you think we're using the red cranberry cocktail? Think about the indicator you're using. What color does it turn? Again, here's the balanced equation that you'll be using. So what do we know? We know the exact concentration of NaOH in our secondary standard, as well as the volume of NaOH that we titrated. We know the volume of cranberry cocktail in our Erlenmeyer flask, as well as the balanced equation, as you can see here. Therefore, using this equation that you see here, we should easily be able to calculate the moles of hydrogen atoms. And from that, simply divide by the volume of cranberry cocktail that we pipetted, and we can easily get the concentration of hydrogen atoms, also known as the acidity of the cranberry cocktail. Remember, before you begin, you must clean all your pipettes and burettes three times with hot water, three times with DI water, and three times with solution. And after you're finished, rinse it three times with hot water and three times with DI water to clean it. Make sure to label your beakers as all the solutions look very similar and you would not want to mess any up. Good luck!